News coming to you live from the studio of MTV at 19 hours 30. Manhunt on for suspect who stabbed to death a laborer. Public school students caught on tape engaging in sexual activities. Nurses to resit exam after a paper was leaked. And in court, coke and mule slapped with five years in prison. Those are the headlines for news update here on MTV. The details and more when the news returns. Good evening, I'm Gavin Bino with the details of the news. Public school students have been once again caught producing sex tapes. This time, a well-established school has been embroiled in the dilemma. Students are sent to school to obtain an education, but theoretical knowledge is not enough for some. Now, a popular secondary school through Wolford Avenue, Georgetown, has been put to shame after two students decided that they will make a sex tape. Videos have surfaced, exposing two secondary school students performing oral sex. The video, which was seen by this newscast, reveals the identity of the female, who is said to be in second form, while the fifth form male that filmed the ordeal was discreet about his identity. The video has brought disgrace and embarrassment, not only on the individual, but on her family, as it has been shared on social media. To make matters worse, the act was done in their school uniform. When contact was made with the Ministry of Education, the public relations officer claimed that the Ministry will be meeting with all welfare officers today to plan a course of action to deal with such instances. They are also uncertain on how to proceed with the students involved. Godfrey Brooms, MTV, News Update. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Social Protection is calling on all citizens to act responsibly regarding the video that involves school-aged children that has been circulating on social media platforms. Additionally, the minister said if identified, the children involved will be given all the support and counseling needed. She urged parents, teachers and relevant personnel to get involved to help stop the circulation of the explicit videos and support the children. Following the fatal stabbing of a laborer which occurred outside a city nightclub early Sunday morning, the police are in the process of reviewing all CCTV cameras located in and around the building with the hope of attaining the identity of the perpetrator. Dead is 42-year-old Sunil Singh, also known as Gray, a laborer the police claimed to be a destitute. According to recent police reports, about 2.30 hours on Sunday, nightclub bartender Charles Valenzuela, 21, had just closed up the bar when three men approached him and demanded they enter. After being informed about a stipulated curfew time and that the bar was already closed, an argument ensued which eventually led to a scuffle between the bartender and the three men. It was during the scuffle that Valenzuela was stabbed to his left arm. According to the police, Sunil Singh intervened and attempted to part a brawl but received a blow to the head instead. Singh then decided to run for refuge but was eventually caught and was left motionless on the roadside. When contacted for additional information, Divisional Commander Clifton Hicken related some facts regarding the police's investigation into the incident so far. It started at a night compared to the, uh, the, 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 the deceased was, was um, assaulted a piece of wood by somebody else, but he left and he went over to uh, Kitty, about um, 10 feet, 15 feet away from the nightclub. And he was accosted by the same suspect and he was stopped. He subsequently died while taking treatment to the hospital. We get footage, we clean up right now. We are checking the footage, we are getting some information, but, too, but I can't disclose his name anyhow. But I can tell you what we are doing, we get some information and then we are cleaning, we are cleaning up two sets of footages. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The police NE division over the weekend was successful in unearthing over one kilogram of marijuana during five raids in Linden, Kokwani. Additionally, five cannabis plants and a .25 semi-automatic pistol were retrieved. Seven persons have been arrested with two admitting ownership of the drugs, according to the police. 
They are all in custody awaiting charges, which are likely to be laid soon. Coming up, nurses to resit exam following leakage of paper, and the search continues for Seanette Savory following her mysterious disappearance. The news continues on MTV. Police officers are yet to identify the correct name belonging to the male suspect involved in the disappearance of Seanette Savory, who disappeared without a trace on August 28, 2016. As police investigations into the search for Seanette Savory continues, police are hunting for two suspects who are believed to be involved in her disappearance. While a wanted bulletin has surfaced for two suspects, one of the names given is said to be his brother and not the man in question, according to relative of Savory, Andy Hussein. However, detectives are currently in the process of identifying the correct name belonging to the suspect as he's not registered with the Guyana Elections Commission. It's the wrong name, it's not a brother, but um, we, get, we get it correct or so, but um, we're getting an update, it's a picture from event to jail already. Well, we, get, we can get an update from the now from the jail, because once you know you're going to jail, you get the right name and everything. In the meantime, a wanted bulletin is still out for a Tisha Rahman called Tisha for questioning into Savri's disappearance. As such, anyone with information that may lead to the arrest of Rahman is asked to contact the police station. The last known addresses for both suspects are Horse Telling Sedan East Bank Demerara and Bell West West Bank Demerara. The family is hopeful the suspects can be captured and prosecuted if found guilty of having a hand in Savory's disappearance. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. A woman and her alleged lover who have both been chopped about their bodies by the woman's estranged husband are all said to be in a critical condition at the New Amsterdam Public Hospital nursing multiple injuries. A mother of one, Nisha Permalu, and her supposed lover called Brakup, who were mercilessly hacked about their bodies over the weekend by the woman's estranged husband, are currently at the New Amsterdam Public Hospital nursing multiple injuries. According to a police report, on the day of the incident, 42-year-old Narayan Permalu of Bushlot Quarantine Berbice, who shares three children with the victim, welcomed his estranged wife and her reputed lover inside his house for drinks. It was while they were all inhibiting alcohol that an argument ensued between both Nisha and Brakup. Police information revealed that Permalu, being quite intoxicated, excused himself from among the two, went upstairs to his room and returned with a cutlass, which he brazenly used to chop both victims. According to the report, Nisha Permalu, 48, who received a chop to her temple, is in a critical condition, clinging for her life, while Brakup received several chop wounds about his head, arms and face and is said to be in a stable condition. After committing the gruesome act, the police source indicated that a suspect who consumed a poisonous substance is also in a critical condition. Up to press time, this newscast was informed that from all indications, both the perpetrator and his estranged wife may not pull through their ordeal. The police are still investigating the matter. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The Private Sector Commission notes with concern the relative inaction of the government and the slow pace of the Ghana Police Force in the matter against cultural policy advisor Ruel Johnson over his Facebook post for the alleged torching of the Queen's Atlantic Investment Complex. The PSC views such a call as tantamount to terrorism on a private business. The Private Sector Commission says that they have no confidence in Johnson before calling on the Minister of Education and the Government of Guyana to remove him from the serious role of cultural policy advisor. Following the leakage of the exam paper last year, nurses are left without an option but to resit the exam, an order made by the Ministry of Public Health. This decision was disclosed despite investigations continue into the alleged breach of the clinical multiple choice examination paper. While those investigations continue, Minister of Public Health of Walda Lawrence, after meeting with the Nursing Council, has decided to have some 105 nurses receive the exam. According to the Minister, the Ministry has partnered with the Education Ministry for support in preparing and administering questions for the exam. 
Staff will also be recruited under the ministry to evaluate the examination papers after its completion. During this period, the Nursing Council have agreed to provide a tutoring for those students who are involved because not all of the students who wrote the examinations did both parts. So it would be only those students who would have written the multiple choice aspect of the examinations. Acknowledging relief, Viewbert Ford, nurse of the Jurching School of Nursing, says after a royal run around, his place of decision has finally been set in stone. We have been in a disturbed emotional state due to the fact that of the, the, due to the fact of this entire issue. We have been advised to work on the clinical areas and to be there present from seven to three, five days a week. It has been stressful on our behalf. It has been very disturbing. However, we, we are just grateful that it has come to a, a resolution and it seems fair that um, this will benefit both us the students and the nursing profession in a whole. However, the officer appointed to investigate the matter is presently overseas and will continue the investigation upon his return, explained Lawrence. In October 2016, 250 nurses sat their final exam countrywide when an alleged breach was later discovered in the clinical and functional examination paper. The discovery has resulted in the examination committee of the General Nursing Council deeming the sitting as null and void. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Still to come, GPHC gets a new board of directors and the Georgetown prison receives television sets. You're still with News Update. Welcome back. The Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation has installed a new board of directors. Find out who they are in this report. In light of a ministerial decision which was taken to dissolve the board, the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation has been functioning without it since November 30, 2016. However, Cabinet has decided to appoint a new board to manage the important health institution. The new appointees were announced today by Public Health Minister Valdo Lawrence during a press conference. According to Lawrence, the board will be making decisions relating to policies, standards and issues faced by the health institution. And in order to assist us in being able to achieve that vision of being able to have the Georgetown Public Hospital operate in the manner in which it was set out, and that is as our tertiary Health institution. The seven member board includes uh, Dr. Ivlo Sinclair, Khaled Adams, Sonia Rupnot, Cleopatra Barkler, Kempton Alexander, and Dolly Alexander. The chairperson is Ms. Cassandra Alves. And I would like to inform you that Ms. Cassandra Alves comes to this position not only with a Bachelor of Laws degree and the legal education certificate, but she also comes with a Master of Law degree from Dalhousie University School of Law, High Flux, Nova Scotia, Canada. Meanwhile, Acting Chief Executive Officer Dr. Shamir Ali and Chief Medical Officer Dr. Shamir Prasad will remain as part of the board. The previous board, which came under much controversy, was claimed to be politically controlled. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. A pact has been signed to protect marine resources in the ocean in both Suriname and Guyana. The World Wildlife Fund, Guyana's, along with the Protected Areas Commission, earlier today officially launched the project promoting integrated and participatory ocean governance in Guyana and Suriname. This project will fill critical information gaps by developing comprehensive and visually appealing spatial data, enabling informed decision-making regarding marine protection and management. The overall goal of the project is to increase the protection of marine and coastal resources in Guyana and Suriname through participatory planning and defining priorities for marine protection and wise use. In delivering his remarks, European Ambassador Jenex Van Dettig 
highlighted that the project will significantly enhance the protection of marine and coastal resources of Guyana and Suriname. The European Union wishes to contribute to preserving the unique marine and coastal biodiversity in the Caribbean Sea Basin. Roughly 1.1 million people will directly and indirectly benefit from this project. It aims at addressing the challenges deriving from climate change, fisheries and carbon storage, and thus contributes to decreasing the vulnerability of this part of the region. Meanwhile, WWF Guyana's representative Lawrence Gomes expressed that the ocean is one of the greatest gifts to mankind. The emphasis is on marine spatial planning, as has been said in the introduction. So we would be placing people first in terms of people who are knowledgeable about the ocean because they may be researching it, but also because they are an active user of the ocean and thus are gathering important knowledge about it. Um, people that are stakeholders because they have a real stake and a real dependency on the ocean. So this is how we place people first in this project. More specifically, the project will contribute a substantive positive impact towards achieving 10% of Suriname and Ghana exclusive economic zone designated as marine protected areas. Additionally, Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman, who was expected to be present at the signing, was a no-show. Reporting from TV's news update, I am Cassandra Knott. The Ghana Prison Service today received several entertainment sets from Roraima Airways, all with the aim of enhancing the educational abilities of inmates. Roraima Airways, in a bid to show their support towards the Guyana Prison Service, today donated a number of television sets and several VHS players and cassettes with the goal of providing inmates of the Camp Street Prison the opportunity to a variety of learning aids and educational programs. Captain Gerald Gavaya of Roraima Airways, who have spent several years as the chairman on the Guyana Prison Sentencing Management Board from 2010 to 2015, Relay the reason behind the timely gesture. Train the re rehabilitation of the prisoners and two as well are tools to help the training of the prison officers. And um, just before I had um, vacated the position as chairman of that board, I made a pledge to the prisons that we were going to donate the five televisions with the VCRs and I'm um, sorry, they're not DVDs, director, um, but we did a complete um, revamp of our hotel systems and I did promise you that we were going to do this and today it gives me really really great pleasure um, to hand over these televisions and I think we have uh, an entire box of also videotapes, educational tapes and movies that we will also hand which I hope that you'll be able to distribute today system as well. Meanwhile, Deputy Director of Prisons Acting Gladwin Samuels related that a donation made by the airline company is one that is highly welcomed and encouraged. Gladwin stated that the idea of rehabilitating persons is paramount as it prepares them to re-enter society as changed individuals. We have a responsibility to rehabilitate persons who are sent to this institution so that when they leave, they can go back to the, their various communities better equipped and able to meaningfully contribute to those communities. It was said that this ceremony is a simple but significant ceremony. It is significant in the fact that even though persons might look at it and say it's just five televisions, these televisions will go far away in terms of being used as teaching aid, especially for persons who are entering prison and are not literate. We can, we will be utilizing these television in terms of helping them with their retraining. It is also important that prisoners are kept abreast with what is happening in society. So the excess televisions would be used in the various divisions so that persons can have access to the news and other aspects of what is happening in society. With that in mind, the director encouraged the business community to follow suit as he further highlighted the rehabilitation of all prisoners of the prison. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned.
News from the Joshua Magistrates Courts on Monday, February 6, 2017. The five teens that were initially charged with the murder of 75-year-old retired professor Paradio Mars were today committed to stand trial. The three boys and two girls who are on remand for the offense today appeared before Magistrate Laren Daly when they were told that there is enough evidence for them to stand trial at the High Court. Meanwhile, moments after the handing down of the decision, one of the accused was reportedly stabbed to the abdomen with an ice pick by one of the other accused while making their way back to the prisoner's dock. He was subsequently rushed to the hospital in the Ghana Fire Service Ambulance. An outbreak of fight amongst inmates caused pandemonium at Georgetown Magistrates Court earlier today, which saw police officers calling for backup. It was reported that the prisoner, while in the prisoner's holding cell of the Georgetown Magistrates Court, pulled out a knife on another inmate. 19 year old Ragas Lamazon, who is said to be the knife wielder, was charged in October 2016 with the murder of Elaine Avenue Man. Meanwhile, Police officers at the magistrate court are still investigating what has caused the massive breakout. Finally, following the discovery of over 200 pounds of cocaine in frozen fish at the Charlie Jagan International Airport, the accused Kapil Harish Takuran was today sentenced to five years behind bars. Takuran of 14th Street Falls made his initial appearance before the court and was charged with being in possession of 88.200 kilograms of cocaine on August 9, 2016, the 31-year-old, who is said to be a businessman, was remanded to prison after he reportedly denied the allegation made against him. Meanwhile, after making her ruling, Magistrate Laren Daly today sentenced the accused to five years in prison along with over $200 million fine. Reporting from TV's court round up for Monday, February 6, 2017, I am Cassandra Knott. That sums up our newscast for the night, but before we go, here's a recap of our headlines. Manhunt on for suspect who stabbed to death a laborer. Poli public school students caught on tape engaging in sexual activities. Nurses to resit exam after paper was leaked and in court. Cocaine mule slapped with five years in prison. Here's a reminder that the newscast can be viewed online on our MTV Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Additionally, a rebroadcast can be seen later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours 30 on Tuesday, February 7. On behalf of our news team, I'm Gavin Bino, thanking you for watching. You have a safe and productive night.